Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our regularly scheduled Wednesday webinars. We are very, very happy that you are joining us. I'm sure that you're very, very, very happy that the end of the year is soon upon you. I know, you know, working in a district before working for Eduphoria, you'd have teachers coming up to me and saying, oh, what are you looking for most this summer? And it's like, uh, the summer is the busiest time of my year. So <laughs> I don't know if that was the same for you, Paige, or not, but it's like everyone's excited for different reasons for summer, but it is now upon us. And yep. it is very, very exciting. We're very, very thankful that you're taking time out of your busy day to join us today. So let's get started. Today we're going to be covering the end of year procedures. This is an annual event for all of us of uh, getting to share information about checklists and things to do to close out the year. This particular session is everything but aware. Last year when we did this, and Paige can agree with me, we tried to combine everything into one and aware kind of took over. So we're going to have aware next week. If you're here to learn about end of year procedures for just aware, you probably want to wait till next week because that's when that'll be covered. So we're not going to be able to answer aware specific questions, but Jason and Jenny are going to be handling next week's webinar and able to assist you better with those closeout tasks. And today it's just going to be Paige and I, my name is Joel. I'm one of the training and implementation specialists. I'm joined with uh, Paige. You can hear her in the background. Good afternoon. There you go. And like I said, we're very, very excited to be joining you today and to be reviewing this information. If you have any questions or comments about the current topic, there's the little questions box and one of us will answer those questions for you. So while I'm talking, Paige will be answering questions. And then while Paige is talking, I'll be waiting for Paige to return to answer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll be answering the questions for you that I am able to answer. And so be sure to post those questions in there and we'll get to you and hopefully cover everything that you need in this webinar. And it's a lot of information. We have a lot of help online available for you as well. So here's what we're going to cover. We're going to cover the items in system management. Strive, Strive Workshop, Forethought, Form Space, Facilities and Events, and Help Desk. And some of the things that we're going to be re reviewing with you for the end of the year are uh, mandatory kind of things, cleaning up things for the start of next year, school year. And then there's some optional things. And I think in our notes, we, we cover that in the slideshow. Um, when this presentation is over, we'll also post this presentation in the notes and in the email that goes to you after uh, the video is uploaded and processed. It's like four hours after this, you'll get an email and it'll have the link to view this webinar again and then the link to this actual presentation if you need it for reference. And so we'll have that available for you. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Uh, just some quick help for you. I don't know if you noticed this, I redid our help articles and this came out in April, but we have end of year checklists in help. And I'm actually gonna drop out of the presentation and show you what that looks like. So if you go to help and you can access help on any page and any application, there is this help section now called end of year checklists. And this year I broke it out for teachers, specific to teacher, and then it has the application and what they need to do and then it's the step by step with the screenshot for um, completing those tasks and then also for principals broke it out by application here's the things they need to do also with the step by step for what they are able to access as well i also broke out because i know like in like i said Paige and i came from districts uh, before working for eduphoria so we might have been the system manager, but there may have been someone else who managed specific applications. Like sometimes my curriculum director might have been managing aware and forethought on their own. So what I did is I created a checklist for the application so that whoever is managing it knows to go there. And then the system management 
checklist. This is the information that we have posted before for the end of year system management for each of those applications. There's a checklist with videos. Uh, some of the videos are old, older. Um, the screens look a little different, like the logo's kind of changed in the top left, but it's the same process in the checklist videos. And then there's open source training resources. And this is where I have a Google folder that I've created. It's full of handouts. Um, each one of the folders themselves includes just the screenshot images. I've had requests from different districts. Hey, we're trying to create our own uh, like handout. And even though we like yours, we just want to use the images. So I broke those out for you in here. And then here's a document end of your principal checklist. So it mirrors that help document. It's just a, a quick document to walk through it. End of year teacher checklist for 2019, all the things that teachers need to do. And then also that strive preparation checklist. We'll get to that in a little bit, but just to show you what this looks like, this is the end of year teacher checklist. <clears throat> this actually was an idea that came from a user. It was Janie Cook who shared about making an end of year teacher checklist and she gave me some great ideas for that and we published it. So if you have ideas or things that you wanna see us share, post those in that little comment box. We would love to adapt to what your needs are because it may be helpful to other districts as well. So these are all available. Again, that's through our help, the end of year checklist section and all of those forms and different resources are in that open source training resource bucket right there for you. So as we go through this, if there's anything that we cover too quickly or you're not sure what to do, you were maybe distracted for a little bit, that happens. Just know that all of these things are marked with step-by-step -step procedures in our help section. And that is in our presentation here. Go back to this. So some hot topics in that summer actions checklist, uh, calendars, and we're gonna go over that in just a second, and system management. And then another hot topic is in Strive, and Paige is gonna cover that section about archiving goals. So we'll go through that as we are going through this presentation. So in system management, there's a specific task that has to take place of creating the instructional calendar. We recently had someone send in a support ticket about summer school, like how do they consistently keep the applications available during summer school? And we'll talk about that. Also in system management, one of the things that needs to be done this summer is making sure your campuses are up to date. If you're closing campuses, we have tasks for closing those campuses. And then if you're renaming a campus, if you're uh, opening a new campus, you wanna make sure to have those campuses available for the start of next school year. So you wanna go in and create those and I'll show you that in just a second. For managing users, making sure that all your user accounts are ready for next school year, removing those that are not going to be at that campus for next year. Um, if there's any deleting of staff, if there's the process for adding staff and when those staff would be available. This isn't something that you would wanna do like the day after everyone lets out, you wanna give a few weeks time for, especially those teachers and staff that are moving maybe to another position in the district or maybe moving districts themselves, you don't wanna go through and just delete everybody. You wanna have access to their uh, portfolios and things to help transition them to those places. But this is stuff that needs to be done before the start of school for the next year. And then also I'll show you the reset user profile option and work to update your custom groups in the system. And so I'm gonna go into my demo account here and I am in system management. So this is a section where someone who has system management authority would have access to complete all this information. And so it's just the, the general district settings. Here's the school calendars. So this is where you would create your instructional calendar for next year. It looks like I already have one in here. And then inside of these containers is where I would create what's called the reporting calendar. So the container itself is the instructional calendar and it's a wizard for creating that. So as we were just mentioning about summer school, 
these are reporting calendars for the 2019 to 20 school year, or in this case, if I went back here, the 2018 to 19 school year. If I were needing to have a summer school calendar for just this summer that I wanna attract information into, then I would create a new calendar. It's gonna have the button for new instructional calendar. And it's just a wizard for walking through. I would set that first instructional date. I'm just gonna pick June 3rd here as my first instructional date. And then my last instructional date, look, it went all the way to March, so I'm gonna back that up to summer. Let's make it to July 18th. <clears throat> and then I can report what type of uh, reporting goes into this. You know, it's is it gonna be two terms, three terms? It's hard in a summer school section, so I'm actually just gonna select one here, but I'll set those dates in the calendar itself. And so here's my calendar. I can set, again, I can change the start date, end date, and then I can also create a, a reporting calendar for that particular uh, calendar itself if I want to have a different term cycle in there. And that's just, again, that's if you're doing summer school, you want to keep the applications open, you want to be able to use uh, the testing information and AWARE, and also have availability for doing lesson planning for your teachers during the summer school months and keeping that open which I thought was a really good question for someone to ask about that. Paige, is there anything you want to add to that or any questions about that? No questions at this time. You are explaining it very well, and um, I don't have anything to add right now either. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> so that's calendars. Again, it's a setting system management. We talked about if you're opening and closing new schools, here's your list of all of your schools and departments and so schools of course are going to have the licenses tied to them for the different applications and those are usually set up by our business office based on billing but it's also where you can identify your school contacts your principals this is where you would set the reporting for that particular campus based on uh, the aware testing data whether it's six weeks nine weeks or your using trimesters and just basic information is set here. Um, it's also where if you need to, you can rename a campus. Um, there's trouble with renaming ca campuses and connecting it with data. So it's one of those things, if you're needing help renaming a campus, contact our support so we can make sure that all of the data connects correctly. Um, again, this is where you can create schools. I know it says create new school, but it's creating a new school and then you can identify it as a department if you want to create a separate department. Departments do not have licensing attached to them. So that's kind of a place where you might put specific buildings that are not schools where there is aware data associated with it. But then the container for that department and that school can replicate across the different applications for grouping users into those specific buildings. We good? Okay. Uh, can I throw one thing out there yes. before you see that screen? One, if you're creating any new campuses, there are se some of the apps require hours of operation to make different features functional, and so. That's one thing that gets overlooked sometimes. It doesn't really matter if they're exact to what your building is, but they have to be something because the default is 12 a.m. to 12 a.m., which means zero time, and then there are some features that won't work. So just make sure you don't skip that hours of operation. Good point, especially facilities and events. <laughs> So again, that's the creating new school. The user groups are the groups that are defined uh, by the system. So how users select the campus that they're attending, the grade level they're teaching, the subjects they teach, or their role if they are a principal or if they're a counselor or whatever roles are selected in their profile, that creates the system groups. It also has schools, so the schools would be your schools and your departments. And this is where people are selecting the building that they're in. Some 
I think some districts might have that set where it's automatically selecting their campus. And then custom groups are any groups that you build where you define who is in those groups yourself. And this is useful in numerous applications, uh, especially those with workflows like uh, form space, facilities and events, where you can assign a specific custom group that would be either an approver or notifier in that group in the workflow. And so custom groups are those that you can update, especially if you know staff that are leaving the group or you have new staff coming in. This is where you would define who to add or who you need to remove from that group and also create additional groups if you need to. For user management, uh, this is where you can import new users or you can create new users step by step um, if you want to create them from scratch. Smaller districts sometimes do this for creating new users. If you're using our Active Directory sync, your district's already set that up with the technology department, then accounts are created that way. But this would be if you're wanting to mass upload your own group or you're responsible for creating each of the users individually. There's also this manage user profiles. So sometimes we'll get the question at the start of school or like right before school of what is it we can do to make sure our teachers and staff have an adequate password, a secure password. And that's when you would look at this as an option. Now, this is not something you wanna go and click randomly. <laughs> we have had some districts do that and then the person contacts us a little upset because what it does is it, a reset profile check, what it will do is it makes every user, when they first log in, they have to reset their password. And also depending on the employee identification options that are checked, it may request that they enter a social security number or it may request just the four digits, the last four digits, or it may require that they enter their employee ID number, which some district employees may not know. So. This is a way to go in and maybe say at the start of school, I want all my users to reset their passwords and also reset their profiles, which would be uh, make sure they're at the right campus, make sure they're at the right grade level and subject area. So it just kind of pushes out a reset to every person in your district. So it's something to consider to do, maybe to have a conversation with higher ups if that's something they want across the board before you make that decision and then selecting those options for what's going to be requested of them when they log in to verify their identifications. I want to pipe in just a little bit. Yeah, um, I do recommend doing the reset profile check. It is something that you want to be cautious about like Joel said and when I was in the district I would send out an email saying next week when you log in for the first time you will see this screen and these are the things we want you to check mm -hmm. so that everybody was informed about what was happening and if they didn't know their their employee number and you didn't have this box checked they would at least know that they needed to find it before then. Um, the reason that I <laughs> recommend doing the reset profile check is because it does allow them to move if they've changed from one campus to the other. Right. All that is controlled by the profile and the profile is controlled by the individual. So even though you have Active Directory Sync setting up your accounts, it's not going to make all of those changes for you. So you, you need your users to be reminded to go in and update their teaching assignments and their campuses if that changed. And it's sort of a domino effect. If the teacher doesn't update their profile, then the principal doesn't see them in the list and they're not showing up on the right campus and mm -hmm. then they can't do their goals or the principal can't see them to approve their goals. So it kind of snowballs into more and more things. So I personally like the reset profile check. I just think what Joel said is really important. Communicate with them before you do it so that they know what's coming and that they get all those changes made. Correct. Yeah. Uh, one other thing that's on here that wasn't in the notes was also in the manage user that you can print a role report for your various applications. And I think this is something good to review uh, in your district as well. So like example for Strive roles, you would be able to see who has Strive appraisal administrator access, meaning who has access to be able to make all the setting changes in Strive, who has um, school district 
appraiser, school district limited appraiser, and it just prints a, a PDF report like you'll see here on the screen. I'm going to zoom in to it. Maybe if it'll let me, it's not letting me. I guess I have to click that little button there. But it's going to show the names of the people who have those specific roles in your district. And then it will help you also determine do those people need those roles? Are there changes that need to be set? If you have differences between a department appraiser being like a principal and then maybe your assistant principals are limited. It just provides you with the list of who has access to what. And then especially if you have someone leaving the district, you'd be able to see what role they had so that whoever replaces them, you can give them the exact role of the previous person. And that's still here in the management print role report. There's also the print right report, which breaks out the categories of all the rights in the system for users and who has what specific rights assigned to them. So those are just two quick things that you can print, keep track of, make sure you're filling out the right person for the role based on any changes that take place over summer. I'm going back to my little slide here. Oh, this is going to be you, Miss Page. I'm going to hand off to you. All right, you're passing the baton. Yes, I think so. Yes. <laughs> sometimes you don't know if you know, are or not. So, <laughs> um, so I am going to pick up with Strive goals. And um, again, keep asking questions. If you, if you have any questions and let us know, we want to make sure everybody feels comfortable with the info before we leave today. So there are a couple of main areas of concern at the end of the year with Strive. And I want to talk about goals specifically goals were kind of um, a big deal last year because not everybody got to the end of the process and so the archiving goals and all that didn't always happen so I want to talk about how teachers complete and reflect how they can copy what they need to do for next year and then what the appraisers need to do so I'm going to go first to a teacher account I am logged in as a teacher and I did not mean to hit that P sorry 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 I meant to hit the zoom in and I'm going to go into again I'm a bad clicker today I'm going to go into Strive that's where I really want to be and I'm going to go to my personal view as a teacher so I'm going to see my evaluation process and when I scroll down and I look at my goals I have two professional goals here one is to decrease student behavior write-ups, and that goal I am saying is completed. And then I have increased parent communication, which is in the approved state. And then when I move down to my student growth goal, I have a goal that is in the submitted state. So you can always see the state of the goal here on the uh, approve, uh, or the evaluations tab. It'll be listed. In the If I go to the goals tab, and I can do any of these actions from any of those places, um, it's just going to look a little different. So I have a goal here that is in the unsubmitted state because it's gray. I have a goal that is in the submitted state because it is orange. I have a goal that is in the approved state because it is blue. And then I have one that I have marked completed and it is green. So I can tell from the colors on the goals tab or from the words on the evaluations tab, what is the status of my goal? If I have a goal that is completed, like this one is, it's been marked completed by me. Um, so I'm up here and, and all I, I don't have any options to complete the goal or to archive the goal. All I can do as a teacher is mark it completed. But if I've marked it completed, then it's ready for my administrator to go in and approve. I'm, I'm sorry, archive. If I have a goal that is not completed, like this one, then what I need to do before I leave, and hopefully before my end of your conference with my administrator, is I need to either edit this goal and change the target completion date. So if I didn't finish it, if I'm not done, then I can go in and edit my approved goal. I can change my target date to next year, and I can continue working throughout the summer and throughout however much of next school year I need. 
if I do think that I am finished with the goal and I'm ready to start a new goal for next year, then I need to mark it completed. And when I mark it completed, then it's available for my administrator to archive. I can also copy this goal to a new goal. So if I have a goal that is to increase parent communication, but maybe some of my action items are gonna be different, the goal is going to be the same, probably the standards and tags are going to be the same, maybe the, some of the success criteria would be the same. So rather than typing all of that again, I can copy it to a new goal, edit the dates, edit the actions, add additional actions, and it's just a faster way if I'm going to have another goal next year that is related to this one. So maybe I'm going to say I did complete these two action items, but I didn't do everything that I want to do with increased parent communication. So I'm going to copy that goal to next year. It gives me a, a brand new version of it. I can change my dates quickly. Maybe I'm just going to work on it through December and I think I'll be finished then. Oops, that was supposed to be my target date. So I'm going to start from here and I'm going to complete it in December before we go to break. Maybe I'll add some additional criteria and maybe I'll delete these actions that I had last year and add in new action items. So I have copied it over, I have my tags, I've changed my dates and emptied out my actions and I'm ready for a new goal. And that was a lot faster than starting from scratch. So then I can save this as a new goal starting now, moving through next year. And then I would go back to the one um, that I worked on for this year and I would mark that one completed. So I'm going to mark it complete, and that means I am saying I'm done with that goal. I have completed it. So the next step is for me to uh, get my, uh, my approver, my principal, to go in. And the way I envision this happening is in that end of your conference, as an administrator, I would have that teacher's information up while I'm doing the conference. Let me go to the right school and find that teacher. And there she is. So I would have this open during our end of your conference and I would be able to look at this and say, I see that you have two goals that you think you have completed. And I would open those goals up one at a time. And I would say, yes, I agree from the evidence that I'm seeing here, from what you put in your actions, I agree that this goal is complete. And as the administrator, I would click archive. And it's, something's not right. Oh, it did archive, it just didn't do the, usually it does a little flash and I can tell that it's finished, but it did archive it. So now the status of that goal is archived. Um, we're going to talk about the way to archive goals in mass, what the administrators can do. And I know that the principals probably would be happy to let the administrators do all of the goals together. But one of the nice things about having the, the principal, the appraiser archive those goals is that's their way of saying, yes, I agree, you did complete it. Because the principal didn't mark it completed, the teacher did. And in order for me to agree with that completion, then I either need to make sure the teacher has copied a new goal, changed the dates, done something, or I just need to go ahead and archive that one. So as the administrator, I can do that archiving. Um, if that doesn't happen, or if there are some, you just know there are some out there that didn't get archived, the administrator can always go in to Strive, and I'm gonna go to Settings, Appraisal Settings, and Archive Appraisals. And this is where you can archive all of the documents or whatever documents you need to archive. Uh, my recommendation is to do goals separately just so that you can watch the dates. Um, so I'm gonna uncheck everything else and I'm gonna say that I wanna archive just the professional goals. And this is gonna get all of the goals that use the goal wizard. So 
the default start and end date on the calendar here are the dates from your instructional calendar and the start date may work for that maybe none of your teachers showed up but if this is the first day of school then some of your teachers may have been there a week or two weeks ahead of time and they may have started writing their goals then so I might want to back up my start date so that I can catch any of those teachers who wrote their goals during that professional development time that happens before the first day of school and then my end date is the last day of school but my teachers may have been there for a few days afterwards and I might want to give a week for all of that to get finished out so I can change the start date and end date of the window that I want to archive for. The only thing that's going to be archived during this window are goals that are in the completed state. So if a teacher has a goal that was submitted but never approved or approved but never completed, it's not going to get archived. All goals have to be in that completed state before they will get archived either by the principal in that summative conference or in this mass archive, they have to be in the completed state in order for that to happen. That really was an intentional thing because there are some goals that are gonna continue and I don't want them to be marked completed because I'm gonna continue to work on them next year. So I don't want it to get archived. And that's the way that you can have those goals that overlap from year to year. Any questions about the archiving the goals? No, I think there was just clarification about if if teachers are writing goals right now for next year, will they be archived? And you answered that. Okay, excellent. Yes, they can be writing their goals now for sure, but they're going to have a target completion date of sometime next year. And the goal is going to be either unsubmitted still, submitted to their principal, or maybe even approved by their principal, but it's not going to be completed yet. It's not going to be marked as completed. Therefore, it will not get archived. Right, and also that that summative meeting is where usually it's recommended that they are the teachers are meeting with their appraiser, and that's when they're determining what to do with the goal. Exactly, that, that's the point where they're supposed to mark the goal as complete if it is completed, or they copy it to a new goal. It's like a meeting where <clears throat> they're agreeing upon the next step in the goal process and then completing those steps there in the meeting. So if the appraisee, uh, the teacher, and the principal are meeting and they are looking over the goal, they're looking over all the documentation, all the evidence, and they both agree, hey, this goal is complete, then they can mark it complete. And when the archive happens, the mass archive, it will pull that goal into it. If it's one of those situations where they're like, you know, I wanna continue to work on this goal for next year, they have the option to copy it to a new goal to submit for with new dates that they can update the goal statement, they can update the actions, they can update the check-in dates and the end date for it. And then once it's copied as a new goal, they can also resubmit that goal. And the old goal could be marked complete if needed to go into the archive. So it's whatever's agreed upon in that summative meeting. Yes, and I did want to show this one um, section in our in our online help so I went into online help strive and under strive for teachers there's an article that says teachers clean up last year's goals we can rename that now it's going to be clean up your goals yearly I think but what it uh, what I like about this page is it shows you all of the states of a goal both the icon that you see on the goals tab and the words that you see on the evaluation tab and it tells you what your options are um, if I if this was one I was just playing around with, I was just trying to learn the goal wizard and I really didn't do it, I can delete it. The teacher still has the right to delete. If I really do want to work on it, I can submit. So it gives them the options. If I have a submitted goal that my principal never approved, that's not really an official goal because my principal didn't approve it. So I can either ask him to approve it or I can delete it and make a new goal for next year. Maybe I want to copy it, make a new goal for next year, and then delete the one that I didn't actually ever work on this year. Mm -hmm. Um, so it walks you through all of those different states, which shows you what you have going on um, and what the teachers need to do. So they can look and find which goals do I have that are not in the completed state. And if they're not completed, then I need to do that before I leave or they will not get archived. Yes. And I wanted uh, Cindy Carlton made a great point. 
She says, if teachers write goals this school year, the evaluation status report will not count them unless the start date is changed in that report to this uh, semester. So it's like if you're in the fall and you're running that evaluation status report to see how goals are coming in or you're doing the goal report, you want to make sure to pull in for this month as well because that's when some of the teachers are writing goals. Exactly. That's a very good point. Start it in May and let it pick up anything that got done over the summer as well as what they do that first month of school. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is archiving those other documents. The goals I would do separately because they are kind of on a separate timeline. Everything else I would want to go ahead and select all the other things that I use. If you don't have um, the intervention documents is sort of left over from PDOS when we had a TINA as a separate document. Now that intervention is part of the post-conference for strive but if your district is using something other than t-tests you you might need to check that you may not have any group evaluations you may not have any file attachments but you might so you can do all of those things that you want to uh, have archived and then you can set your dates again I don't know that I would have any reflections. Well, reflections might happen in that before school PD time. So I would I would want to make sure I include that. And then sometimes it's going to take the administrators a few extra days to get all of the summative documents closed out and everything. So make sure that you have a deadline that they can adhere to and that they know they have to have everything finished up before the end date of that window so that when you click the archive now button it's going to grab all of those documents and put them into pdfs one of the things that um, let me go to a teacher and look at that archive um, one of the things that happened at some point is that uh, this just turned into the type of document and the date that it happened but it was in previous years saying the title of the document the title of the template and the date and it's going to go back to that so instead of just saying walk through it would say um, dimension one slash two walk through or whatever your documents were named because of that and and for other reasons what you really want to do is make sure that none of your templates have the school year on them. I know that anybody in education, we're kind of locked into that bell schedule and school year as our time frames for everything. And so every document either says second period or 1819 on it somewhere because that's just how we think in, in terms of school that's time. That's how we file. <laughs> that's right. That's how your brain works. I understand that. But what happens is with the template, the timestamp comes on the date that it was done, not the date that I created or the date that I put in the title, but the date it was actually used with the teacher. So if I have a document that's called, or a template that's called um, Dimension 2, two and 3 Walkthrough 1819, and I use it next year, it's going to have the wrong date showing up here. It'll have the right date when I look at the document, but it'll be confusing. So you don't want your document titles, your template titles, to have any years in them at all. It just needs to say what the, the template is and then let the date come through the date that you execute that template. Okay. Um, I think... Let me see where I am here. I'm going to hand off to me. I'm handing back to you. That's what, what that's what I was trying to decide. It was my turn <laughs> to hand back. I mean, if you um, want to keep going, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. It's, let me find you. Okay, I will make you the presenter. Okay. And there you go. It's all you. Awesome. Should be showing my screen. There we go. So, uh, again we kind of bleed over from end of year into next year, which is, that's that teacher part of us, of over explaining everything, I think, two page. Um, because there are some things that happen at the end of the year that would bleed into next year, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew we have a document that is already created that covers the strive preparation like the things to do to get ready for using strive for next year 
<clears throat> and again, that's in the end of year checklist. It's in the section for system managers, the open source training resources, and it's the Strive preparation checklist. And of course, as we get closer to the start of the school year, we'll have a Wednesday webinar and we'll advertise it and it's going to be all the things you need to do to set up for the school year so we'll be covering that information as well but i wanted to just show you if you have not seen this drive preparation ch checklist what it looks like and it's here in the google drive and it says drive preparation checklist and this is what it looks like and one of the things that we really 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 highly totally encourage is to have a meeting where all the people who make decisions about appraisal and professional development are in the room together. Most of the time when we get support tickets in, calls, or people needing help, we can tell very quickly that the person who's setting up Strive is not TTES or TPES trained, possibly never been a principal, never uh, done an evaluation on a staff member and that person is usually tasked with creating the evaluation process for the whole district and so <laughs> that would have been Paige and I <laughs> in our districts with no background in evaluation and so it just kind of gets rid of the burden of one person making all these decisions without knowing necessarily what is required. T-tests and t -tests in particular are trainings done by TEA and by the service centers uh, that are like a certification in a way for making sure that people know the entire process, what's required in the process, uh, appeal processes, like if teachers or staff want to appeal their evaluation and then incorporating that into how they're setting it up for next year. So always, always, always the first thing would be to have that meeting and to get all the people together and to walk through the setup from last year to get the the questions answered what like did we cover everything were you able to get good data out of the appraisal analysis were you able to get good reports out of our reporting tools are the walkthrough forms working for the principals do we need to make changes to things like that would be the meeting to have over summer to make sure you're getting everything set up correctly for the start of the school year. And that's just getting everything walks you through with links to the specific help articles for how to get those things set up. But in each of these sections, it's like these are the things that need to be determined by that group of people. Like, do you want to use the summative form that would copy uh, from the observation. The, those determinations need to be done by committee and not by someone who's just setting it up based on one webinar they watched. So just making sure you are aware we have the help. The preparation checklist is available. It's time to start planning that meeting. And again, towards the start of school, we're going to do another webinar on how to get things ready for the start of school. So we'll be able to answer questions there. And we are also available in training to help. We'll have that information uh, available also. Uh, going back to this, so again, that's in the presentation. I'm going to go to the next slide. So workshop, specific to workshop, and I'm just looking at time. So my job, when I was in the district, I was always like the PD coordinator, PD director, and I would have teachers who were either retiring or leaving the district or maybe changing positions and just making sure things were ready for them to make it easier. Uh, this first line item, making sure the portfolio is complete would be making sure that any courses that were done over the course of the school year, making sure that they were given the credits and that uh, they were awarded the credits they needed, that there's nothing outstanding, that it's waiting for a course to be approved or an outside credit request approval. Just make sure all the teachers, all of their portfolio is complete by the end of the school year. I always encouraged my teachers, whether they were leaving or staying, to print a copy of their portfolio because you might have a teacher who says at the end of the year, at the end of the summer, uh, I'm going to go ahead and retire, but uh, I want to keep all my records, and so it's just a 
it's a good thing to have. It's a printed. I know it's like some people are so paperless, but it's one of those things. It's a PDF of their portfolio. They can save it in their personal Google or their work or print it or whatever they need. And it's the entire portfolio of all their professional development. And that way they have it with them just in case they are unsure if they are returning for the next school year. If you know staff members are leaving the district, like I had on our website for staff in our staff development section of our website, I had a, a section of the website called uh, summer planning. And in that section, it was, if you are planning on leaving the district, and I just gave notes in there. And one of the things I said is, you know, if you uh, are, if you know you're going to another district, do they use Google, for example? And if so, here's how to transfer your your personal stuff from your Google to your new Google. Here's a quick way to do that. And the same for Eduphoria. If you know you're going to leave and you want to get your portfolio transferred, here's those steps that you need to do. And contacting the right people behind the scenes who can do the transfer of that portfolio. But I just was making sure they understood it's a communication component of they need to find out who the PD person is in the new district and connect them to the PD person in the previous district. And then there's that creating of the portfolio file that can be transferred between them. And then also having teachers register for summer courses. Now, Inside of our help section here is the teacher checklist. There, uh, we'll have a beginning of the year one as well, and that'll take the place of the end of year checklist. And at the beginning of the year, there's going to be one for Strive, transfer your PD credits if you are in a new district. So we will have that information available on there. It's one of those things that's up to that staff member to be communicative about where they're going to make sure those things transfer correctly. Any questions popping up on that? No, I have to remember to okay. unmute. Um, sorry, I was talking. And it's weird, a transformer just blew up outside. I don't know if y'all heard that explosion, but it shook my whole house just now. I didn't hear the explosion, but um, apparently in sympathy for you, my neighborhood has a bunch of cop cars and fire engines going down the street. So Wow, it's an exciting weird. presentation today. Let me tell you, high action. Uh, for managers, um, like I said, in system management, you have where you manage your users, you can delete users. We have that awesome feature called undelete users, which can be used if someone requests those files after they've left the district and after they've been deleted. I remember for a long time, we did not have undelete users. You had to like move people into this Z district file and then go hunt for them. But if you have the uh, undelete available, you can just search for the user and undelete them, bring them back export their WXE and then delete them again. Also in workshop, and I'll go into it and show you this, you uh, want to update your categories where you're sorting your uh, professional development. I was helping a district recently and they had the category still for 2016, 2017 uh, science um, category that was available. <laughs> and it was one of those things where it was like, oh yeah, we need to update that. Because that's how it would show up for teachers, and I'm sure they weren't really looking for new staff development in that folder. Credit types, that's also important for reports that you're running out of workshop. If you are changing your locations, if you're updating your schools and departments, you want to update your training locations. And then for instructors and guests, like if you have people who are coming in providing summer PD that may not be part of your district, this is where you can add instructors. You can also add guests. I was in a district that served as a service center cluster district, meaning that we partnered with the service center and our district hosted other districts staff that would come to our sessions. And that was the use of guests where we would create guest accounts for people in other districts that were coming in. That way we could track seating inside of our uh, workshop application and not just have unknown one, unknown two. We actually used the person's name, so they were on our signage sheet. Made them feel accepted. 
And then e-courses will continue until you archive them. So again, I'm going to go into my applications here. Um, and specifically for, let me go back to the management side. For managing users, if I am needing to remove people like this guy, he's kind of crazy here. Uh, I can delete him. I'm not going to because that's my account. Uh, and if I delete him, it's going to move him into undelete users where I can search for that person and find them. And sometimes it's easier too to just go through and remove their school, uh, remove them from there. But once you delete them, they should not be showing up in that school. It's also where you can remove their roles and rights, just clear security, especially if they're like an administrator. This is where you can clear all security for them and remove those rights and then you can delete them so they're not showing up in those reports. And that's your manage users. If I go back over to Strive, Strive is where I can access my workshop settings for all my courses. And if I just go to my most recent courses that end on the school year, I'm not going to have that many, but this is one from April. One thing I want to do is make sure that that has been marked complete. When you have a lot of courses down here, they should have a green check mark over them indicating that it was marked complete. And that usually means that the attendees that were in the course were awarded the credits for what they registered for for that particular course. So just making sure that you've closed out all your courses by the end of the school year so that people have the credits they need for printing their own portfolio. And so as a user, if I go in here to my professional development view and I want to look at my portfolio history, I've got my summary and I can print and that's going to pull in that PDF of all the credits that I've received and I have that for my own record keeping. Oh, and then e-courses, like we said, if you are managing all the courses in the system, of course your standard courses that are published, they have the end date. The end date was the day after or the day of the course that takes place. But if it is an e-course, you can have your active e-courses that are available these are all my draft ones that I keep kind of going in and out of. And then any course that is done, I can move into archived e-courses by simply just accessing that course and then changing the status to archive. And that would move it into the archived areas. So this is if you have those particular uh, annual compliance e-courses that you have in your system, maybe you have it done year by year, uh, this is where you would archive those previous ones and move them into that folder. We do not recommend really deleting any e-courses because you would lose all the data attached to that. And also, if any credits were awarded to staff through that e-course, once you delete the e-course, it removes those credits. So be very, very careful with that. The cool thing is to go in and actually just mark it as archive. Or if you want to reuse it, you can put it back in draft mode, edit it, and change the dates, and then reactivate it for your users as well. Like Bloodborne Pathogen. I think I use the same Bloodborne Pathogen training every year because, I mean, what really changes? Any questions on that, Paige? Anything popping up? Not not really. We've got a couple questions, but I think they've been answered. Okay. And so you can throw oh. it back to me. All right. I'm hoping I'm giving you enough time. Well, you were very generous and gave me, what, seven minutes? So um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you grief. Did I just send it to you? Okay, good. Or you yeah. took it. I took it. I just stole it from you. You couldn't wait for me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go into forethought and talk about what 
needs to happen for teachers and managers in forethought. The good news is that the last apps that we're going to talk about today, there's not nearly as much that needs to happen at the end of each year. And so this is going to go really quickly. For teachers, there's not a lot to change because they don't create a new lesson plan book or schedule every year. I always use the word book, or that is my analogy, is that you want your teachers to think of their lesson plans as a big book with a chapter for every year rather than a new lesson plan plan book every year and again no years in the titles so I want my my lesson planner to be named Miss Parker's class or something like that but I don't want to have 1819 in it because I don't want to, to make myself think next year that I need a new one called 1920. I want to put everything in one book so that I can go back and grab lessons that I taught last year or maybe two years ago and bring them forward if I want to and I need to have that all together. So what I do want to do is unshare my lesson planner if I've shared it with anybody, update any team planners that I participate in and then update my profile either now or when I come back at the beginning of the year. So as a teacher, I'm going to go into Forethought really quickly, and I'm going to look at what I have over here. Um, I have a teacher here who has shared her planner with me. Maybe that teacher is gone. In this case, it's actually a sample, but, um, but it was set up as a teacher planner. That teacher is gone. I don't want that planner anymore. I can right click on it. I can do anything, double click on it. I cannot make that planner go away because the owner of that planner is the teacher who shared it with me and that teacher has to be the one to unshare it. So it's important at the end of the year that I go to my lesson planner and I go to change my settings down at the bottom left and I'm going to go to share my planner and if there are any names in this box I want to remove them and it's as simple as let me go Oh, I guess, let's see if I if he's in there. No. Um, let me find somebody that I can actually see. So as a, I will add them in. And if that teacher is in my list there, then I'm going to, at the end of the year, click on them and remove them. That doesn't change anything about my planner. It doesn't change anything about their planner. The only thing it will do is remove their planner from, or remove my planner from their list. Then if I should happen to move away over the summer, they're not stuck with my name in their list for forever. Because the only way that it can be fixed if I didn't do it at the end of the year is for somebody in the district who has admin rights to go in there and um, undelete that person, impersonate them, and, and, and do this step where I remove the teacher. And since that person is probably a lot of you guys, you don't want to have that happen. So that's why we say have the teachers go in, they just go to my lesson planner, change my settings, share my planner and make sure that box is empty. That's what you want to do is make sure it's empty. Um, then the other thing that they want to do is update any team planners. So when I go to my team planners here, I'm going to go to one that I participate in and I'm going to go to change team settings. And you have to click on the planner in order to get the team settings rather than your personal settings. So I'll go to that and I'll say add and remove members. And I want to take out anybody that I know is leaving the district or leaving my team, but I don't want to take out everyone because when you remove the last person from a team, that team is gone and any lesson plans that were in that team planner are gone. So um, you want to make sure that you leave someone in the team over the summer to keep the team open. It's really not a big deal to lose a team planner if the teachers are copying those lessons to their personal planner. But I know, even though that's best practice, I know that there are some teams out there where they just leave the lessons in the team planner. And that scares me because it is so easy to accidentally delete a team planner. So I encourage them to copy them into their planner, but then also leave somebody in there. If everybody in your team is leaving, ask the campus technology person, hey, can I put you in here to keep it open over the summer or put the principal in there? But you just wanna leave a member in there Whenever that last member goes, and I'm going to click on and remove Michelle, and then I'm going to click and remove myself from the team planner, and there are no members any longer, and it says the team has been deleted. Everyone has been removed from it, 
If you want to create, if you want to bring it back, you got to start all over again with a new team planner. So once you take that last person out, that's it and it's gone. Um, right now, it looks like that team planner is there. It hasn't disappeared out of my list. Sometimes that takes a couple of minutes for it to disappear, but trust me, it's gone. And if you call help desk, they're going to say, sorry, but they can't fix it. They don't have that ability to fix it. And then again, the last thing that they want to do is before the end of the year, they want to go back to applications home and they want to update their profile. Whether you force them to that process or they do it individually, we want to make sure that they're in the right places and seeing all the right stuff and, and get put in the right groups based on their profile choices. Okay, um, I did want to mention that we have updated standards out there. The draft for social studies that are going into effect in the fall are out there now and they do say draft on them in our system because they have to with us, with our contract, with academic benchmarks and all of that. But as soon as it gets changed and they get pushed down, then we will go in and remove the word draft and if you've already brought them in, then it will disappear from yours as well. The kinder through eighth grade ELART teaks are being implemented this year. They're out there now. They do not say draft, so you won't have to worry about that. And then the high school ELRTs um, that don't go into effect until 2021, they are out there also. So you can have your teachers bring them in and kind of see how they compare if you want to or you don't have to if you don't want to, but those are out there and ready to go. And we do have an article in our help about um, adding those standards into your system. In form space, there are three things that you're going to want to do. Um, clear your data forms, update your workflows, and then clean up your list. So I'm going to go back to my administrator person and I'm going to go into form space really quickly. And the first one would involve two steps. Um, again, with your forms, you don't want to have the year on the form because I don't want to end up having in my district folder the 2018-19 personnel recommendation and the 2019-2020. Uh, so I don't want to have a bunch of versions of this. I just want to have one form that I use again year after year. So I'm not going to put a name on it at all. But at the end of the year, I can go into reports. I can go to form analysis. I can select, I'm going to select absent from duty. And I'm going to say, I want to export to Excel all of the data that's in that form. So every absent from duty request form that came in is going to go into this spreadsheet. And I'm just going to say export to Excel. It's going to generate an Excel spreadsheet that I would then come down here and show in my folder. And I would rename it to be rename. Uh, this was the 2018 2019 absent from duty. So I have renamed it with the year. I can save that somewhere and have that wherever I need it, but I've got that school year, whole school year's worth of data from that form in one file. Once I've done that, I don't need to keep it in the form anymore because I've exported it. So I'm gonna go back to my Manage tab, go find that absent from duty form, and I'm gonna go to the settings, and I'm gonna say I wanna clear document responses. So now I have all of my this year's data exported in a spreadsheet and I have the form blanked out and ready to use again for next year without having to create a copy of it or anything like that. I don't have to make a new one for next year. I just cleared this year's responses so it's bl blank and it's going to be keeping that data in, in the form for this one year only. So that's the first thing I want to do is think about how I can manage my yearly data and, and export and clean that up a little bit. The second thing I'm going to want to do is go to my forms and, um, well, actually I need to go to my manage tab and go into the management and general options and I want to update the workflows for my forms. So if I have people who left, um, I'm, those people might have been different roles and different workflows in different forms. And instead of having to go to each one and find it, I can come over here to my general options, go to the replace user utility. I can say that, oops, I forgot to click on. 
I said okay. Click on and say this teacher is leaving. So I'm going to find her, select her, and then I'm going to replace her with another person. So I'll find that person and select them. And now anywhere, apparently I didn't click, anywhere in the system that it finds McGonagall as one of the workflow steps, it's going to take her out and put Snape in instead. So I click one button. They might have been, that might have been 10 different forms, but it's replaced all of those workflow steps with the person that I selected. So that's a fast and easy way when you have people who are in your processes to delete them, replace them with someone else. And then the last thing that um, you would want to do is go to your archived documents and um, I can look and see if I have any in here that are archived and I can see them out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, it was Halloween and I was doing a sample real quickly. Yeah. Um, so if I go to my district forms and I look at general forms, I might have like a bunch of forms in here that I don't really use anymore or that I was just, you know, messing around with. So I can go into each one of those forms and over here where you have your draft and your active, you also have archive as an option. So I can archive any forms that we're not currently using. Maybe you did at one time do the, you know, 2017, 2018 form and then the 2018, 2019, and you want to get rid of some of those old ones. You can just go in to any, your form list, find any of them that you're no longer using and set them to be archived. And then if I go back and look at my archived forms again, back to management, back to archived documents. Now when I look at my district forms, I'm going to have multiple forms there. And if I go into one of those forms, if I decided I needed to use it again, I can unarchive that document. So that's, those are three things that I would recommend doing as part of your cleanup for form space. And then our last slide is facilities, <laughs> events, and help desk all together um, in both applications. And none of these are things that that are mandatory or that you know are going to impact the way you, your applications work. But it is a good idea to go in and look at user role and roles and rights in each application, not just these two, but all of them. And that's been part of the process for all the others. In F and E, you'd want to go in and add new rooms or campuses important add any inventory that you have asset managers and workflows also need to be updated and so um, I will go in and say in facilities and events it's going to be facilities and events is the only application oh I'm not in as my administrator sorry um, is the only application that has roles and rights within the application rather than in the management piece so when you go to the management tab, there's going to be a manage users here, which you don't see in the other applications. And I'm going to go in and find a user, and then I can go to that user and look at their roles and rights here. So that's what I would want to update. It's separate from the system management manage users piece. The facilities and events is, is broken out for some reason. And then you can also assign assets or the management of assets to a person or the management of public calendars to a person. So I'd want to check those four things for each of my users. I can also over on the manage tab, look at my, all of my reservation workflows, everything that I have, and I can go in and delete any that I don't need. So maybe I don't really need a separate workflow for each library. I just need, um, one library. One, one workflow with different directions for different campuses. And so uh, that's a whole nother webinar. You can check out our, <laughs> our, our documented ones that are online, or you can email training at edgeofforia.net if you have questions about that. And then in help desk, there's not a whole lot that I would want to do. I, again, I would want to change roles and rights, and that's going to be um, when I go to manage. I'm going to manage my technicians here, so I would go into a department and make sure that 
people had the right roles within the application here, um, if they are technicians or managers or supervisors. So I'd want to update that. And then I can also go to archived requests, open, 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 and I can come down here on the left there's going to be a button that says archive old requests and you can archive tickets within a specific date range so if I want to archive all of my tickets for this for the school year you have to pick that end date is it the end of school or is it when the principals leave or you know when is it going to be for you but you can set your start date and end date and archive all of those requests again so that you're starting the school year with a clean slate and they, they do not necessarily go away. They are available if the user has the ability to view all requests. There's a button for show archive requests. They can still be viewed in Correct. there and reports can also run on them as well. Absolutely, but it does clean up your list. So when you're, when you're looking at tickets, you don't have as many to scroll through. Okay. Um, always reminding you that you can sign up for updates to get emails from us about the webinars that we have coming up and that you can find information in our help section about everything including how to receive those announcements so this is all of our contact information for social media and how to get info from us Joel do you have anything else as we're closing down just that that news item is important making sure that there's someone on hand to receive news announcements if you know you're leaving your district position we hope not um, that would be a good way to sign up someone to receive the announcements and updates that are coming out throughout summer. During summer, we, we don't go on vacation. Like we're working, we're gonna be producing more content. We're gonna be updating some of our training and how we do things online and uh, always new product releases and things like that. So this is where you would sign up to receive any type of information about updates that are coming out. I know that we have run like 15 minutes over but this one was so, so much sorry. can you imagine if we did it with aware be crazy the last thing is in the presentation i put an easter egg and you'll receive this presentation and if you click the link it is a summer playlist or it's actually the top 10 songs to get you ready for summer including europe's the final countdown the <laughs> animals singing we gotta get out of this place in sync singing bye 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 so this playlist is for you to listen to while you are doing all of your end of year tasks. Again, like we said at the very beginning, thank you for taking the time to join us today. And we hope this information is helpful. If you have any questions, need more help, contact us training at eduphoria.net. Is that it? Yeah, That's look. it. Have a great summer. And y'all tune in next week for the aware version of the end of school. Playing some of the music. Play All us right. out. Play us out. Thanks again, guys. We can do celebration.